Hi, my name is Matt Cox and I'm a con man. I was recently released from federal prison and I'm, I guess, accredited. Accredited is a thing, right? I'm accredited with stealing, what steal, I hate stealing, with bilking between 15 million and 55 million dollars. Uh, I was on the run for three years. I was number one on the Secret Service's most wanted list. I was pursued by the FBI Secret Service and U.S. Marshals for uh, several years, and uh, basically I was, uh, they said, the most, one of the most prolific uh, real estate con men uh, of all time, which is a total exaggeration, by the way. All right, clip one. This is great. It's, it's a great opening clip scene. The first 30 minutes of this movie is fucking awesome. Just for a minute. Actually, I'm, I'm staying here. So she picks him up. She's a kind of a grifter. They're all grifters. Oh, really? She picks him up. She runs a scam. She's trying to run a scam. It's a fucking common scam that there was huge in the 20s and 30s. Nice scene, she's hot. Oh my god, it's my husband. Shut the fuck up! Husband. Whoa, 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 she was gonna be no good to you after that, so I, you, you should really good. shoot me. It's actually an what old kind of stuff we con. Saudi bachelor party shit. Saudi bachelor party. R. Kelly drop cloth shit. Please, come on, shoot me. Just stop fucking around. I ain't gonna fucking kill you. You'd really be doing me a favor. Cancer. Tumor the size of a peach. Pull the trigger, you'll see. You got cancer. He's on to us. Oh shit! I knew this wasn't gonna fucking work. You guys suck. Just give us the money. Look. Or what? Or he's gonna shoot you in the neck. I wanna shoot a guy with kids until she gets my pants off. And then you gotta give me a chance to run. He basically says, This is how you okay. fucked it up. She tracks him down, realizes who, finds out who he is, tracks him down, says, I want in on your scam. Bucky Spurgeon is your father. He basically runs short, short cons. They're short cons. They call you mellow. I'm all crewed up. So basically they take her on, it's a, a group of what they call bunko men, and they travel around to events and they run these little short cons and they're, you know, they steal people's wallets and they, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it, it's a great, it's great, it's great the way they lay it all out. He goes, he breaks it all down, takes her under his wing. This is good. Gets a distraction from everybody. All the guys take take people's luggage and everything. This is how it's supposed to work. So this is where they all get together. Yeah, this is good. Oh, you mean the one where we make so much money we all retire and get yachts and boob jobs? Yeah, that's a fantasy. Boob jobs. Volume business. Boob jobs, right? That's funny. Okay. Fantasy for you. Yeah, of course, because you know, all of my female. Uh, Co-defendants or whatever all said that I bought them boob jobs, which is just you forced them into. I forced it, them into, but he, in, yeah, you know, they're in front of the judge. Cry, don't, don't judge me. Stop. You just the look. That didn't buy anybody any boob jobs. Okay, there were women got boob jobs, but that's not my fault. That was purchased with their own money from the scams. Anyway, so. Uh, all right, what's great, what's funny is that one scam, like in the whole thing, I like that they took all these old style scams, um, like the, the one where they get the guy with the pants, and typically the way that scam worked, like they don't go into it back, you know, in the 20s and 30s when the, these bunko men would travel around to the different cities and set these scams up. The woman would, the female accomplice, whatever, she would lure the guy up there, and usually they had like a trap door in the room 
So while the guy's having sex with the chick, they go and they take his wallet, empty the wallet, stick it back in. And that way when they're done, he gets up and he leaves and they've got all of his money. They have everything. Or the husband comes in and they've already taken the money, put it back, and he grabs his pants or whatever and takes off. Or supposedly there's also the one where they run out without their pants. How often is that really going to happen? I don't care who comes in with a gun or not. I'm going for my pants before I run out the door. So, but anyway, it's a great movie. And they also do this whole thing where they have credit card swiping. They have all these, mo they modernize it a little bit, but they basically stick with the uh, old style scams. But that's a, it's, it's great. And that part of the movie is really good. Like you really, the first part of this movie, it's captivating. And then it gets a little bit too insane. Yeah, it's a little more realistic in the beginning. In the beginning. And then we jump the shark a little bit as, as Then we go the, the whole programming, this what the, then the next scam where they take the money that they have and then they like triple it or double it. It's fucking this part is just okay, so this is clip two. And uh, oh yeah, this is the one where it's just it's outrageous. It's it, it's it's over the top. Uh, he, they, they, they prime her. I do like the way they prime her. She has Enjoy. no clue what's yeah. happening. It, it's pretty good. It, that part's pretty good, but anyway. Hey, this is Matt Cox. I hope you're enjoying the video. Wanted to let you guys know real quick that one of the ways I, I pay my bills is I do paintings. My paintings range anywhere from 800 bucks to a couple thousand, but I also have smaller paintings that I sell for $295, and that includes shipping. And I've got Marilyn Monroe, Bubblegum Girl, Biggie Smalls. I've even got some Trumps. I'm gonna leave my information in the description box and enjoy the rest of the video. They got the money all in cash. That's all of it, 1.2? Do not let it be your sight. You promise? Uh, yeah, I promise. No dogs or ponies. If that's hey. 1.2 million, oh, it's in fucking fives look. and ones. Look at me, man to man. I love how okay. they make it seem like this. What's the most cash you've ever had in here? I don't know. In cash? In cash. Like on the, on the table. Maybe on the six bed. to eight hundred thousand dollars. Literally felt uh, fit, fit in a little bag. Was it a hundred? Little bag. You just kept yeah, the fifties and hundreds. Someone more than twenties. Anyway, so he starts betting. She thinks he's got a betting problem. He starts betting on ridiculous shit with this guy. Yeah, they prime her for that. Yeah. You call it. They run. They run. Five grand. What? The stereotype of an Asian guy that likes to gamble. Hundred yeah, grand. I didn't know that was a stereotype. Anyway. One hundred thousand. I mean, I'll add it to my list of stereotypes now. Now, every time I see an Asian guy, I'll be like, Rich gambler. Asian, rich Asian guy that likes to gamble. Are we doing this? What are we doing? All right, so. <laughs> I'm not redoing this shit. I tell you that, I'm done. It's hot, I'm tired. Nobody's getting me well, into their coffee. I know, but I don't know how what she's gonna use in the so, here. We might have to just do this again. Right? No, 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 fuck it, run it. Clip. She's running it. So, cause this is all she's getting. So, all right. It'll be cheaper for me. I thought we were spending I'm not concerned here. about your money. Yeah, I, I know that. All right, so he's that. betting, he just bet like, I don't know what, $100,000 or something on this. On this play, boom, he loses. You got a problem. Now they're up to like a million dollars. He's basically lost the one point five million dollars. That's not even his money. Yeah, he keeps losing it. Right. So he just makes a bet with this guy. That's like one hundred to one. It's good eyes for you. Two million. That's fucking crazy. Okay. All he's all he's saying is. You pick, you want me to write it down? pick the number of any uh, player on the field, and my girlfriend will look on the field and get that number. She'll find the guy that you actually pick. And she's not even in on the scam. Which is, which is ridiculous. They don't even make them write it down. Yeah. They're doing it like to be clever. Like, look how clever we are. We, are you out of your fucking mind? Huh? Dump the shark? What? Dump the shark? No. 
You ever seen fucking Happy Days? Aren't you like fucking old? Yeah, I'm fucking. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. When he jumps the fucking shark, you never seen. Oh, he jumps the shark. Yeah, that's when the Happy Days turned to dog shit. They had an episode where like you had to like legendary like jump over a fucking shark, and then the show was. All right. So anyway, so anyway, this is he's they're playing. He's now breaking the whole thing down for her, on how he knew the guy was going to pick that player. Telling him all day. From the moment he left his hotel room, we've been priming him, programming his subconscious. He's been seeing the number 55 all day long. Sure, bro. On the elevator. In the lobby. Even the stick pen on the doormat. Not only that, we loaded his route from the hotel to the stadium. He looks out the window, primers are everywhere. That and little finger is break easy. I think. But he does. Little There's no T-Rex around on. It. Little T-Rex arms. Nice. Fuckers are leaving little T Rexes now. All right. They're leaving little T Rexes now. <laughs> That's great. In the comment section. Okay, so. Oh, you know, it's funny when I laugh about it. It's insulting when you fuckers laugh about it. So, you have to drive home with me. So, anyway. Okay, so that was clip two. And uh, it's just, it's over the top ridiculous they they basically make it seem like they have they can do anything at this point so will smith's character ends up breaking up with the chick and then they end up meeting back together again she uh, tries making him jealous she tries to make succeeds. him yeah it's a whole thing and he's got a whole nother scam that he's running he basically goes broke he's running another scam it Basically, it just, the whole movie kind of falls apart at the very end. It just suddenly becomes very uninteresting, and it becomes more about their relationship than it does the actual con movie that most people probably went to go see. And I think they had a budget of like 50 million, and it brought in like 150 or 160 million dollars. And the, probably just because, I'd say 50 million of that is because it's Will Smith and that chick that's super hot. Um, so people would go just to see them. I mean, I could just watch her walk around for two hours. I'd pay fucking the 15, 20 bucks just to... Anyway, so this is clip three, and this is his next kind of con. You were a man known for great skills of persuasion and deception. You were very hard for me to find. Why did you take my offer? Went well, broke. disgruntled team engineer of yours offering to sell the EXR to McEwen. What I will give him is a fake. Doesn't really do anything. He just So he's going to this guy to and he's going to get his software and driver. pretend to sell it Don't to worry. one of his competitors. Disgruntled engineer. I expect you have something to say to me. Oh my God. They set up a whole thing so that it looks like he's a disgruntled engineer. So that the he can then go to his competitor and say he's stolen. He's stolen this this device that will help him win. So he gives him the actual the actual um, what is it a computer chip or something like that. There you go, son. Lap it up. And he sells it. It's supposed to be a fake one, but it's actually the real thing. How does he get access to it? You know, they, they never really explain. They kind of explain. They don't explain. Like, it's so easy to hack into this and hack. You know, they always make it seem like a joke. Yeah, it's, it's some kind of a, the chip that that is... So he sells it to everybody. You, you never really under, it never really explains how he gets a hold of it. Why do I need, if I have the chip, why do I even need this guy? You know, it, it's, is it his? He makes a bunch of money. It's just a, a weak storyline. 
So that's it. So that kind of it's kind of a weak storyline, and it's, it, it ends up being more about the two of them. And anyway, the double um, cross going mixed in with some. yeah. There's a double cross. There's a father thing with the father. You ever get that? The, the guy's the father and the thing, and they do a hell setup. And they they had a good they had a good thing going, and it kind of just starts to kind of collapse at the end. It's still a good movie. It's a good movie. It's just not what it probably could have been. Um, especially for the budget and the cast and the whole thing. Anyway, so clip four. Uh, yeah, this is clip four. This is, uh, this is basically the double cross where the whole thing just goes wrong for him. You really think I'm such an amateur that I would not have someone with my cue? Someone to keep eyes on you? Hmm? 20 years in this business. Teach you never to be too careful. Are you kidding me? What the fuck are you doing? I couldn't take another fucking word. You're next. It, it never makes sense either. Because this is the guy that gave you up. Why would you give me up to the guy? I had the money. You then go and capture me, and you. It just doesn't make sense. I've got the money. We're good. We're gone. So then you tell your boss, and then you kidnap me, and then you bring me there, and then you shoot me. Fuck are you? What is? Who? Well, it's all part of the blow off. It's, it's like an advanced blow off. He's an inside guy, isn't he? He ends up working for him. That's why he tells her he's like, "You're terrified." Blah 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 blah. He shoots him on purpose. It's a part of a I, mega I, blow he off. He had, thinks he's but dead. He, nobody had the money. He's got the money. He's gone. But now so, the other guy's been looking for him because he doesn't want. I don't know. That's just some Italian that's, business. Some Italian guy. Listen, these guys. He I don't. He doesn't want to murder on him. Think about it. Now he's now he got a body to deal with. He says, "You I, deal with it." He's moved on. It's frustrating. It's a frustrating movie. I agree. It's frustrating the whole well, concept. It's, I feel it's like, like a it mega was, blow off there. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess it still doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, it does make sense, but it's it doesn't like in make grifters, sense. Grifters. It's the same thing when they. Uh, it's when the they, same thing in all of them. They all go over this. They all run the same scam in some subtle variation of the same fucking scam. That's why I like this. At the beginning, he's just, they're just a bunch of grifters moving around. You're telling me that over, over a weekend, you guys made 1.5 million. Then you doubled it to 3 million. And hey, now I have to turn around, I have to do this other scam. Come on, stop it. You could just run that scam forever. Anyway, all right, so it's a pretty good movie. It's worth watching. It's not the greatest con man movie. There's a lot of very pretty people in it. Um, the chick, if I didn't mention the chick's hot, so it's worth, I it, I've accurate. mentioned it once, it's worth mentioning twice. Um, and, uh, you know, it's Will Smith, he's amazing, and I think I've ever seen him in a bad movie. Yeah, him and Denzel both are yeah, always it's in good movies, it's, it's ridiculous. just the way it is, yeah. Uh, okay, so, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification button, do the whole thing.